In India, if anyone wants to buy a gun, he or she has to first obtain what is called a gun license. This is a long process. The applicant must submit a gun license application and along with it must attach his personal, educational and income tax documents. Also needed are arms training and physical fitness certificate. All this must be submitted to the DCP who is a senior police officer. The DCP would then conduct a thorough background verification. He checks criminal records, verifies all the documents. After this, the DCP then personally interviews the applicant. His main question to the applicant is, why do you need a gun? The applicant must prove the reasons, like facing life threats. This interview would also reveal the mental health of the applicant. After the interview, the DCP sends a report to the criminal branch and the National Crime Bureau. If the DCP is satisfied, gun license is issued. In India, a civilian gun licensee can buy only small arms like pistol and revolvers. They cannot buy automatic and semi-automatic rifles. But in the US, there is no such thing as gun license. Anyone who is 18 years and above can directly go to the gun shop, fill up an application and have an electronic background check which can last anywhere between 20 minutes to a few days. If the background verification is cleared, the applicant can buy a gun. But which type of gun? If a person is 21 years of age and above, he or she can buy a handgun. If he's less than 21 years and above 18 years, they can buy rifles both automatic and semi-automatic. Wow, this is so quick and crazy. No wonder so many crimes are committed using guns in the US. The US is viewed world over as a technologically advanced country. The civilization that sent man to move, the leader of the free world. But the country is deeply influenced by its media. It has now become a routine for everyone around the world watching TV to see another episode of a phenomena called shootout, where a crazy gunman, most probably a teenager, opened fires with his automatic rifle at innocent bystanders, killing everyone, including kids. Soon after, we hear about something called a gun lobby that looks even more powerful than the Pope. A little later, after a few days, everything returns to normal. The cycle continues. But for an outsider, some obvious question linger. Why can't the US government just ban all the guns? Why is the American president talking like, we have to stop the gun lobby? Is the US addicted to guns like drugs? What stops the American Senate from passing laws banning all automatic guns in the US? In this video, let's find out the truth about the US gun addiction. The US has 5% of the world's population, but has 50% ownership of all guns in the world. For this reason, there are 120 guns for every 100 residents in the world. That's truly crazy. Even the war-torn Yemen has only 52 guns. No doubt the US leads the list in the maximum gun-related deaths in both homicide and suicide cases. In 2020, more number of children and teens died due to firearms than due to COVID-19. According to the Center for Disease Control, in 2020, there were 43,676 deaths by firearms, which means every day 119 people died because of guns. Handgun is the most common weapon by which crimes are committed. Compared to 22 other high-income nations, the US gun-related homicide rate is 25 times higher, although it has half the population of the other 22 nations combined. 90% of all women killed are with guns, 91% of children under 14, and 92% of young people between 15 and 24 years are killed with guns. Guns are the leading cause of death for children. African-American populations in the United States experience high amount of firearms injury and homicide. School shootings are described as uniquely American crisis, according to the Washington Post in 2018. Children at the U.S. schools have active shooter drills. According to the USA Today in 2019, about 95% of the public schools now have students and teachers practice huddling in silence, hiding from an imaginary gunman. Gun ownership finds its legitimacy from the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, which was ratified way back on December 15, 1791. The author of the amendment, former American President James Madison, had rather bizarre logic behind this. 
He said, if the government becomes tyrannical and begins to impose laws against the wishes of the people, then the people of America, who if are well armed, would fight back and replace the government by attacking the federal armies. This in other words means arming the people was a guarantee for liberty. When James Madison was confronted with the question that European kingdoms do not believe in arming the public, his reply was the European kingdoms are afraid to trust the people with arms. This may be understood as America was a newly formed nation and conditions of insecurity in centralizing power prevailed during the early days. But it has been more than 200 years since the law was passed. What do the American people think about it now? In 2008, in the District of Columbia v. Heller case, the Supreme Court of America made a landmark decision. It stated the Second Amendment is sacred and is a guarantee. It maintained that every citizen has a right to keep and bear arms, however, in a regulated way. This means no complete ban on guns is possible, as the Constitution explicitly gives a right to bear arms. But the federal government, from time to time, can decide on the rules of processing firearms. For example, the federal government can exclude a mentally unstable person or a convicted criminal from obtaining a gun. The Supreme Court of America reiterated this in the McDonald vs. City of Chicago case in 2010, sealing any hope of banning guns in America. This means, in India, bearing arms is a privilege, but in the US, it's a right. So now, what is the gun lobby? Who are they? The National Rifle Association is the gun lobbying group of the United States. It's a legal organization founded way back in 1871 and is very active in influencing US lawmakers. The NRA teaches firearm safety and competency. It publishes several magazines and sponsors competitive marksmanship events. The NRA has more than 5 million members. Over its history, the organization has influenced legislation, participated in or initiated lawsuits, endorsed and opposed various candidates at local, state and federal levels. The NRA spends truckloads of money for lobbying purposes. In 2020, the NRA spent 250 million US dollars. The NRA has officially declared it spends 3 million a year for influencing gun policy. However, that is only the recorded contribution to lawmakers and considerable sums are spent elsewhere by our PACs and independent contributions. Funds are difficult to track. To enhance its legitimacy and relevance, the NRA has roped in many celebrities as its members, like former President George H.W. Bush, who was with the NRA till 1995, former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, actors Tom Sillard and Whoopi Goldberg, the late actor Charlton Heston, a former NRA president, famously held a rifle over his head following the Columbine High School mass shooting in 1999, telling gun control advocates that they would have to take it from my cold, dead hands. Now, purchasing a gun and safely keeping it in the house does not require a license, but carrying around to places requires a license in some states. While carrying a gun in public place, there are two situations. 1. Open carry. This means one can carry the gun visibly, just like a police officer carrying around his service pistol. As of 2021, almost all US states allow for open carry, either without a permit or with a permit. The second type is called the concealed carry or carrying a concealed weapon. Here the gun is carried in a manner that hides or conceals the weapon's presence from the surrounding observers. The gun can be concealed in one's purse, bag, trunk, etc. Concealed carry license is issued in many states. With respect to concealed carry license, the US states are divided into three categories. The shall issue, may issue, and no issue states. If a state is in shall issue category, shown in blue, means a gun owner needs to apply for a license. And if background check is clear, then the license for concealed carry is automatically issued. It's quite simple. If a state is in May issue category, shown in yellow, it means a gun owner will not automatically get a license. Here the state government has the right to deny this license. This is somewhat restrictive. No issue states shown in red are the ones where no license for concealed carry is issued. The states in green color are the ones where no license is required for concealed carry. 
In 1986, there were 16 states where there was no issue of concealed carry license and 25 states in May issue category and one state where no license was required. In the year 2000, there were 7 states where there were no issue of concealed carry license, 12 states in May issue and 30 states in shall issue category. Now in 2022, there are 0 states in no issue category, 17 states in shall issue and 8 states in May issue category. There are 25 states where no license is needed for concealed carry. The US is not alone in its morbid interest for guns. There is company. This is the map of gun ownership in the world. The blue coloring shows where guns are permitted, the red where it is restricted. So along with the US, we have the terror capital of the world, Pakistan, Yemen where a bloody civil war is raging, some poor African countries. There are two European countries, Austria and Albania. We also have Azerbaijan and Honduras in Central America. So America's thought process to protect itself from a tyrannous government taking over does not seem to have any support the world over, even among the developed countries. So now, another interesting question. What type of gun can you buy in the US? In most of the states, a person needs to be at least 21 years to buy a handgun and only 18 years to buy a long barrel gun. This includes military grade guns like AR-15. Nicholas Cruz, a 19 year old teenager who was charged with killing 17 people at Majority Stoneman Douglas High School shootout in Florida, used an AR-15 style rifle. Cruz was able to legally purchase an AR-15 about a year ago, according to law enforcement officials cited by Associated Press. The sad thing is that, in the US, the minimum age for consuming alcohol is 21 years, while 18 is the minimum age for buying a long barrel gun. But why is that one must be at least 21 years to buy a handgun, but only 18 years to buy the deadlier AR-15 rifle? The idea is that handguns can be easily concealed and carried along everywhere compared to long barrel guns. The law enforcement thinks that handguns are more likely to be used to commit crimes, especially street crimes, than long barrel guns. This logic is 100% American. Even after 59 years, the Americans have no idea who were the people behind the assassination of their president, John F. Kennedy, or his brother Bobby. Only a library full of conspiracy theory exists. The Americans are just fooled by their politicians and paid media to believe that guns are necessary to sustain democracy, freedom, and the American way of life. But the reality is, teenagers and kids are getting easy access to military-grade automatic rifles like AR-15, and the US public pay the price with their lives. The American public must learn from the rest of the world and push towards another amendment to the Constitution which will pave the way for a complete ban on the guns for civilians, just like other parts of the world. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.